This might be the final round of sprayed up bike for me. This is the last of the cans I've got. Two cans of primer, two cans of clear with one can of the Kieran Flake finish, which will be interesting to try, and just a few colours. So I'm going to combine them all on this frame. Basically, just go through how I am preparing it, how I am spraying it, and try and give you an idea of the of the technique I use and the technique I've sort of worked out to get the best possible finish out of these cans because I'm not their biggest fan but you know I do see the appeal of the non-drip finish that sprayed up bike offer. Now in terms of prep I've had this frame and fork shot blasted. All the paint is gone and despite the reviews of this Nash Bar frame online um, it's actually got some really tidy brazing on it. All the joints look really nicely done so I'm quite impressed with how that is looking. Um, and this is a good base to start with. Sanding of course works um, but taking it back to you know a media blasted finish you've got a nice base to start with. Take Tape up the brake mount which I'm going to do front and rear um, and stick something in the bottom bracket if you haven't got a tool to clean out after. Just a bit of paper will expand in there and block the threads up if you want. Um, and any other surfaces you don't want to get sprayed of course, take those up. Whether you want to block up all of the uh, mounting points for the uh, these, these are U-brakes, mud guards, any of those, whether you want to block all those up with spare bolts as well, that's fine. Um, I just tap them out after um, and that works for me. So yeah, I like to start with this. It's nice and clean, there's no contaminants on it, touch wood, and I can start spraying. In terms of hanging the bike, this is how I do it. Um, it's on, I've got the fork where I can rotate it. I've got the frame where I can rotate it round. I can just pull out the head tube stuff and just drop it down, rotate it. It just gives me freedom to spray every side of the frame and fork so that I'm never missing an area. I've also got the floor kind of protected as much as possible because this stuff does throw a lot of overspray everywhere. Um, I've got a mask now as well. I've got a fan in this room where I can turn it on. So make sure the place is ventilated. Make sure you've got protection down on stuff you don't want to spray and I'd say make sure you can rotate the parts so you can spray all areas. First up, I'm just going to use up some of the Zinc Frame Builders, Frame Builders Cold Zinc Primer. Um, now this is, Zinc Primer is normally a rust preventative primer. Um, I have used this before. You've got to be careful with it, you've got to control the speed, not go too slow on it because I found that if it starts to build up on itself, it reacts. Um, now that could be the propellant in the paint reacting to itself, bubbling away, boiling off. Yeah, but I found a fairly quick motion on this does the job. Don't let it build up with this one and spray from I don't know, maybe 30 centimetres, 20 to 30 centimetres, you can't get close with this because again, if you get close, it builds up and it reacts. Now on the frame, I'm going to be using their just normal metal primer, frame builders metal primer, suitable for aluminium, TI, titanium and FE iron or steel. Um, yeah, I've used this before, it doesn't go on too bad, 
The zinc primer obviously has a grey finish, so it almost looks like the bare metal. This, I believe, has a white finish. <clears throat> now this one is a bit more liquidy than the other one as you can just tell and it's actually a grey finish don't know what I was on about with white but yeah so you can go a little bit thicker with this um, it gives a bit, a bit bit of a better finish as standard whereas the zinc is quite dusty so I'd probably go for this one over the zinc but the zinc in theory gives a better a better rust protection. And this is why I have it able to be flipped over so we can get to the bottom because there's these details that you can't really reach if it's only sprayable from one position. Okay, so in terms of coverage, one can will roughly do a frame and a fork for a fairly even one coat. One coat, that's it. Um, obviously, if you want more, do multiple cans, but yeah, one can is enough to do a fairly even, fairly solid coat. Now, the one you're looking at is obviously just the normal metal primer. Um, like I say, you're able to get in a bit closer, it's a bit more fluid and it gives a nice even finish which I'm not really going to have to sand down too much. I will key it up a little bit so that the next layer adheres properly and then clean it down but you can see that gives a nice even finish. Whereas the zinc primer, and I can't really zoom in too much more than that, it gives a really rough dusty finish. It's not. It gives a textured finish basically um, and it's not too hard to sand down but it's not ideal it's not it's not all that great the zinc so if I was to go with one for sprayed up pike I would definitely go with the normal frame builders metal primer uh, the zinc one I would just cross off my list because the finish on this it, it just requires more sanding basically but these are going to be left to dry now for about 24 hours I'll key them up and then I'll go on to the next coat. Now when we start talking about the colours, what I've found is the blacks, you know the nice solid colours go on pretty well, but the fluoro colours, like this pink, I know it's not fluoro actually, the bright colours tend to be a bit dusty, just from my experience. Um, I've also found out that if you spray this colours at a so a normal distance, you know, a good like 20 centimeters away maybe, they do produce more dust. It's like the particles, the spray dries in the air before it hits it and it does get dusty. So I think the trick with the colours is to try and get in close, but you obviously have to monitor how thick you spray in it, because even if you even though this paint is sort of a non-drip formula if you spray too much on one spot it is going to drip a little bit so you'll see others they're getting close get the work done um i've seen like squid bikes on instagram they get right up close there so i think that's the trick with it to get in close um and see how it goes Pink is dusty, so I'm going to go in close. Uh, yeah, of course I'm just spraying straight over to the purple, so that's not going to work, is it?
So there's a tip, <laughs> as I've learned on the job, if you're doing this sort of two-tone fade, I've got purple in the inside and pink on the outside, do the outside first, then do the inside, because obviously spraying on the outside, I sprayed onto the inside, but I can't spray onto the outside by doing the inside. Got it? Yeah, so you spray outside first, then inside. But I've got right up close with those, and they're not looking too powdery. It feels a little bit, but it's not as bad as it was before. What, this isn't on the cans, by the way. Um, there are instructions for sprayed up bike on their website, how to use it. But it does say to rub it down after, sort of like with um, parchment, like uh, grease with paper, something like that. Um, a lint free rag, I think, is also on there, which apparently, you know, just buffs up the paint. So I'm going to do that as well. I think that's taken a little bit of texture off it. I can, I mean, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect blend. There's still some like spatter over it, but yeah, it's, it is, it is a little bit better, giving it a little buff. I guess it um, just flattens it out and pushes any of the pushes any of the rough particles into the slightly soft paint. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Make sure you give it a bit of a rub down after. So I've done a bit of masking, got 10 inches masked off from the end of the dropouts um, to all the points. I've got a blue line separating in each and I actually just go grab some lettering decals off ebay someone made them up i just asked them to make nash bar and they made them up so i have sprayed the down tube in a bit of a fade and then put the decals over the top so i can peel them off after oh and the head tube's taped up as well so top coat now and again like the colors it seems to be best to get in very close with this give the kind of good shake getting close because um, the further away you are the drier it becomes before it hits the frame So don't be afraid to really get into those areas because I'm, I'm really finding now that the, the distance is the essential thing for this paint. Um, I can really get in close, it doesn't seem to be running and what I've done so far isn't, isn't powdery at all. Now I will say the first time I reviewed like a sprayed up bike, um, spraying it I guess normally from you know, like 30 centimeters away as opposed to what I was doing then about five centimeters away, I got a lot of dust um, around the bottom bracket area here or in all the you know tube joins, all the lugs, um, around all the bridges on the chain stays and the seat stays. And when you spray it up close, it doesn't really, it doesn't really happen, or it's not, it's not happened on this black. Um, the black tends to be a, a nice, 
a nice coat to work with. It's pretty solid. But yeah, spraying up close like that seems to really do the trick. I think that is something I was really missing on last time. Um, the first time you used it, sorry. And, um, you know, the comments were a bit all over the place. Some say I was spraying too far, too close. Some say I was spraying too far away. Some say I was, say I was spraying too fast. But this finish, I've literally, you know, you see me do it quite fast. And I've been really up close with it, really getting in there in all the, can you see that? Yeah, in all the stays down here really got in close and it's been a pretty even pretty solid coat with not really any dusting on the frame that i can see so the base coat is down um it went on quite nice layering it thick close definitely seems to work better still give it a little bit of a rub down after for a little bit of a smoother finish because there are still there are still spots where it does feel like there is a a dry dust on it, uh, but it's definitely, definitely not as bad as the first time round. So I think that's where I was going wrong, staying away from it rather than getting in close. Now, the next coat I'm doing is going to be some of this Kieran. Is that how you say it? Kieran flake. Um, it's basically a clear coat, but it's got a gold flake in this, a metallic flake, metallic glitter. Um, so that's going to go over, again, just the black area really. So anything masked is going to be a flat colour. And then it's going to have a couple of coats of clear, normal clear over the top of everything. This stuff apparently needs to be sprayed from 30 centimetres away. Um, from 30 centimetres plus away, and you can't use it in high humidity. Uh, we'll see. Like, again, I'm, I'm having mixed experiences with the distances of spraying and the quality of the finish. So, this is the first time I'm using this, so it's kind of going to be going my experiences as I sort of spray. So the first couple of passes it is definitely laying down, you know, quite a bit of glitter for the pass. I'm doing it quick and it seems to be covering, you know, well. It's doing a nice glossy layer on it. Um, if you, there are a couple of patches that I've just, I've just sprayed the down tube as well, not that you can see that really. But there were a couple of patches that I just paused slowed my hand momentarily and it quickly built up so the pressure in this can is quite a bit so i guess that's why they say to spray it from far away from 30 centimeters plus so that's why i say i've quickly worked out that you, you can't you've got to spray this quick and you've got to spray it from a distance because this can is under a high pressure um i tried to get in up here and one small blast caused a run on the outside so I'm gonna have to you know wait for that to dry and flat it back a little bit Transparent frame build is finished to finish off. Uh, two coats only on this spike, but I would I would recommend three on this. Uh, spraying from, uh, I don't know, maybe about 20 centimeters back. You really just gotta just watch the, watch the build up. If you start to see pools of white um, and you've got to react quickly, 
then it's gone on a bit too thick on that point and it just needs to even out. Um, if you continue to spray on that spot, obviously, you're going to get runs. Bye. Like that. As demonstrated there. So you see, just a little bit too much. It will even itself out, but I'm not going to put any more in that area. Um, and if you do get a run, you can obviously flat it back. And there we have it. Second coat's on, technically the third for the black, I guess. Um, it doesn't look too bad. It's not as crystal, you know, as a factory finish. Maybe a bit of wet sanding after would help that out. Just very light though, because I don't believe two coats is a lot. Two, I've used two cans, basically. Um, on a previous one, on the... what have I just done? On a previous one, on the Scott, I actually used three cans and that gave a, a much smoother finish. So it's meant to be one can for a satin finish, two cans for a gloss finish, and then anything extra, you're sort of um, building up the gloss, building up the protection. So that's three cans. I'm fairly happy with it, yeah. So I've learned a bit, but we will see the finished result, I guess, when it's all dried and in the daylight back at home. And there we go, a couple of weeks later and we're back home. It's dry, I think. Um, you do really have to give it some time to, some time to harden. Uh, the clear, even after a week, um, I'd left it I just actually put it in my spare room on the carpet um, and the area that was touching the bottom bracket, the tips of the fork, actually stuck to the carpet a little bit just from just from sitting there. So yeah, it definitely takes some time for the clear to harden, two, three, four weeks maybe, fully. Um, it will be dry to the touch obviously, but not fully, like if you clamp, if you clamp your derailers on. Um, it might leave an indent. So something to be wary about. Um, all in all, yeah, I have definitely learned something about the sprayed up bike paint. The first time I used it, I definitely hadn't got a grasp of how it was meant to be used. And I think the directions might be a little bit off. Like You really have to spray it on close for the colours at least. I don't like the zinc and I would rather go for a clear, a 2k clear top coat rather than using two or in this case kind of three cans of clear sprayed up bike for the top coat. I'd just rather use one can of 2k. Um, it, yeah, but the colours, the colours are okay, that's, that, yeah. They, they haven't been too hard to use once you get the hang of them. Um, and admittedly I might have been a little bit harsh in my first review. But I still stand by that I do prefer... I do personally prefer other paints. So I think that is about it. Um, my second, I guess, honest review. Trying to incorporate things I have learned using the paint, using other paints and getting a better finish and it definitely has 
got a better finish. I've had more success this time around and oh, as you can see it's a bit more creative as well. If you want to see this bike then make sure you subscribe and do all that jazz because the build will be coming out soon. The full build that is. And um, yeah if you like the content just keep on watching, like it, share it, comment, engage and I'll um, I hope it helps, but I'll catch you in the next one.